My name is Dennis, uh, and I am one of developers uh, of Rupees here at Inflectra. And this is our plan uh, for today. So uh, we will talk about uh, configuration tasks for Selenium Chrome profile in Rupees. Uh, I will be showing you the live demo, how to uh, do this uh, configuration tasks, and we'll cover eight browser profile configuration tasks uh, during this uh, session. Uh, let's talk about briefly uh, what tasks will be covered uh, in this session. So uh, I'll describe how to launch uh, Chrome full screen, how to launch Chrome uh, with specific size at the very beginning. Uh, we'll go through uh, headless execution in Chrome, how to configure that. Uh, we'll talk about how to disable browser notifications during test execution. Uh, we'll look how to uh, specify which browser extensions to load uh, during testing. We'll set a download folder for files and we will configure permanent user profile. Uh, I'll explain later why it is needed. And we also will run cross-browser tests uh, on a remote browser and on a remote mobile uh, device. So this is the plan uh, for today. So let's start. So how to launch Chrome full screen. So minimizing my presentation, uh, let's create a new test and we'll use it uh, for demonstration. So it will be Chrome profile test. So I choose web and I will show you configuration task using Selenium Chrome uh, profile. So I am choosing it. And the next step is to choose RVL. So we have an empty test and ready to start. So first of all, uh, when you do uh, your test, uh, it's good to create a local browser profile from the very beginning. So when you install Rupees, uh, you have some um, uh, global browser profiles installed, but it's better to have a profile local to your testing framework. And this is easy to do. So you just open one of the global profiles, uh, Chrome in this case, and click on duplicate. Uh, you may specify a name for it and uh, checkbox must be set local. So it is set by default. So I click OK. And now I have the local browser profile for Chrome. So I'll be changing this profile and I will not change the global profile in this case. So it will affect only my test that I just created. So uh, let's first record something so to have uh, a test that we will be running during this session. So I click record on the toolbar. So we will record a very simple and short test. So let's choose the initial URL. It will be some sample React uh, application. Okay, I need to enter credentials. Click login. Let's view some books in the system, some authors, and do the logout. And let's close the browser and finish. So now our test has some steps. Okay, let's see how we can, oh, let's play it back and see uh, what dimensions our browser will have by default without any configuration. So hit and play. And by default, Selenium places browser on the left side. Uh, but in some cases, uh, you may need to uh, the browser to occupy uh, full screen uh, from the very beginning. So you can do this uh, if you will configure your Selenium profile. So I'm going to my profile and I need to find here from specific arguments. So here I need to specify an argument uh, to launch Chrome uh, in full screen. 
to find out uh, what argument to use, uh, I will go to uh, inflector knowledge base. So this is the article 661 that describes what we are going to do. And you can easily find this article in the knowledge base. So uh, it says that I need to use the argument start maximum. So you may notice uh, if you're familiar with JavaScript that this is an array, JavaScript array with just one item uh, inside this array. So I just copy uh, this value as is and go to my profile. I put uh, the value here and save my profile. Uh, so I can check that uh, this setting works even from Selenium settings uh, dialog. So I click test button and you can see that the browser is started full screen. Okay, uh, let's close and replay the test and you will see that browser will be launched full screen uh, from the very beginning. And there is also another way uh, to make the browser full screen. So you may do this uh, through changing the Selenium profile, or you can do it if you will just add a specific step uh, to your test. So let, let me now delete uh, this start maximized option. And let's go to RVL. And after opening my page, I can do navigator maximize. This is an alternative way, but first the browser will not be full screen and only after second step, it will become full screen. So let's launch our test. So it navigates, then maximizes, and then all other steps are played back. Okay, so it was the first configuration task, how to launch the browser uh, full screen. So the second one is how to launch from with specific size. So you may want to launch browser with some uh, dimensions uh, and uh, test how your application behaves if the browser has a specific size. So uh, we can do this as well. So first, let me delete this maximize step. I don't need it. Again, go into browser profile. And in this case, I will need to use a different argument here. Again, let's go to the knowledge base. And there is one more uh, article here uh, that says that Chrome understands window size parameter. So let's use it. I go to the profile. Again, it should be in array. And I will place uh, this setting here. Uh, let's use some known dimensions like 1024 and 768. Okay, again, we can test from here. Looks like uh, it works. And we can close the browser, uh, the dialog, and let's play. And as with the maximize uh, option, there is another way of setting the size for browser in your piece. So you may use Selenium profile, or you can add a specific step uh, to your test. So let's again delete uh, this window size part. Let's save it. And in the test, you can do navigator set size. And let's set our size. Also, uh, we can also um, set position here. Navigator, set position, 50, 100, for example. 
Okay, let's play our test. Also, to run the test faster, I want to change the command interval parameter here. Uh, this is the delay between steps uh, of uh, our test. Okay, let's play. And now we should see the browser move to a specific location and scale to a specific dimension. Okay. So it was the part of how to set specific size for Chrome browser. And the next is how to configure Chrome to execute a test in headless mode. So let's minimize this. Again, uh, this is described uh, in the knowledge base article, how to do headless Chrome testing. And to run a test in headless mode, we just need to use this argument. So copy the values and let's use them as Chrome arguments. Save. Uh, tests will not help us, I think, because we will not see uh, Chrome. And also how to figure out that anything was uh, is executed. Uh, let's add a couple of screenshots to our test. So I want to make a screenshot when we navigate to books page. So let's do navigator, do screenshot. And after we navigate to authors page, navigator, do screenshot. Okay, and let's run our test. So we don't see any browser, it's in headless mode. So while running uh, tests in headless mode, you can continue doing some other stuff on your computer. So uh, the test will not interfere uh, with what you are doing. Okay, uh, test passed and we can see screenshots. Here we go. This is the books page and this is the author's page here. Okay, so we just executed our test in headless mode uh, in Chrome. Okay, next. So disable browser notifications. So let me show you what I mean here, uh, what notifications we are going to disable. Uh, let's uh, record one more uh, application here. So in RBL, I may create uh, another sheet. I will name it notifications. So just do not switch tests. Okay, and let's start recording again. I have this application uh, running, uh, served locally uh, on this machine. And the URL for this application is localhost. Clicking OK. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, we don't see the application because uh, we have our headless uh, option set. So Chrome is running somewhere. So uh, let's first clear business options here. Okay, let's test again. Well, all right, so we can see the browser and let's record again. Uh -huh. Let's launch Spy. Okay, it is running somewhere. So uh, when such thing uh, happens, then it means that uh, we need to go to Task Manager, search for Chrome driver executable. Oh, there are a few of them and we need to delete them. So when we can see the browser, we can just close the browser, but when it is running somehow in the background, we need to kill those processes manually. 
Okay, record again. So it's a live demonstration. So this is a proof. So some unexpected things happen. Okay, so we can see the browser. Uh, this is the URL, clicking OK. And this is the notification. So uh, we see notification and we need to respond somehow. And this is not the web page uh, dialogue. So this is something that Chrome displays. And in our web test, we can do nothing with such a prompt. And if, if we will try to interact with the application, we may not be able to do so. Uh, so in some cases, uh, you may need to just run your test or record your test when such notifications are disabled. So uh, let's cancel recording. I will close my browser and let's see what configuration we should do. How to disable notifications in Chrome. For this purpose, we need to use this argument uh, to Chrome, disable uh, notifications. So returning back to my profile, and go to, where is it? Chrome arguments, okay. And when you put arguments here, you may use uh, two minus signs uh, before the option, or you may delete them. It does not matter. So we'll work in, in any case. All right, save. Let's start recording again. And we can see that there is no any prompt to allow or, or block notifications. So this browser does not support this block notification. This is what our application says now. Okay. So we can finish recording. Let's append uh, this step to our test. Okay, so we actually don't need to launch it, but yeah, we can. So let, let's launch just this step. And the browser should be not showing uh, this notification prompt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it works. All right, so the next part is how to load browser extensions. So by default, when you run uh, your test, uh, Selenium creates a temporary browser profile. Uh, it is a clean profile, no cookies, uh, no extensions, so nothing. So you always start fresh without any history. And uh, if you need an extension, uh, loaded, uh, then uh, you will need to specify uh, this extension in uh, Chrome browser profile as well. So let's see how to do this. Okay, so first uh, you need to download or maybe if it is, it is extension of your company, you have an access to CRX file. Uh, if you are using an extension from Chrome Web Store, then you can download CRX from there. So there is information on the internet that explains how to do this. Uh, if it is you are interested, then uh, at the end, ask me a question and I can show you how to do that. Uh, but uh, I have such a file already downloaded uh, and I put this file for an extension uh, into um, program data in Flectra rupees. Here we go. This is extension CRX file. So this is a Chrome extension. This is actually Spira capture uh, extension from Chrome Web Store. Okay. And the path to this extension, it's a, uh, this is the, okay. We can, there is a, quick way to obtain uh, the path. So we can launch uh, CMD. We can go uh, to a file on disk and we can just drop it here. And I can copy the path. Okay, so it is now in the clipboard. 
And what I need to do is I need to find extensions uh, argument here in the browser profile, and I need to specify it as an item of a JavaScript array. Also notice that in the path, you should use double slashes. Okay, so let's do this configuration. I may remove disable notifications here, extensions. And I need to change every slash here. Mm -hmm. Save, close. Uh, let's launch navigator open step. Selection. Okay, browser is launched and let's see. Now uh, I can expand the extensions um, section here. And you can see that Spire Capture Exploratory Testing add-in uh, is loaded. So this extension uh, is now loaded because we specified it uh, in Chrome uh, profile. Okay, so let's close browser. And the next part is how to configure download folder uh, for uh, in your profile. So if in your um, testing scenario, you download some file, uh, by default, it will be uh, downloaded uh, into generic downloads folder uh, on the machine. But if you need to change uh, this folder, then you may specify it uh, in Selenium profile as well. Uh, let's see uh, how to do this. This is another knowledge base article. And uh, it says that we need to get this value. It contains uh, some folder, uh, but you may use different value. And we need to put this value into prefs uh, parameter of Chrome specific section in the profile. Okay, go into here. Uh, prefs. Okay, I will delete the extension. And the download folder here is inside temp downloads, program date and flag for IP stem downloads. Let's go to this folder. We are already here in program date and flag for IPs. Go into temp, downloads. It was from previous testing. I can delete this folder. It should not exist. It will be created. Okay, and let's save. And we need some test that downloads, so downloads something. Okay, let's record such a test. Record. Mm, I will download the file from Inflector website. So there is rupees highlights page. And here we have a link to um, presentation. Okay, let me pause recording, minimize this this and resume. Oh, I don't need this. Okay, so uh, I will be cl clicking on, okay, let's maximize the browser. Okay, I will be clicking on this uh, um, button here. I don't want to click now. I may simply learn uh, this element and add this element uh, to, uh, to my uh, object repository. And that's it. I think this is enough. I can close browser. Uh, let's add the new sheet, download, and append steps here. And I have my presentation. Uh, object here, so I can do presentation, do click, that's it. 
And let's check. We don't have download folder yet. Uh, again, checking that we have download folder specified. Okay. And let's simply play these two steps. They will run the browser with a specific download folder. And then we will click on the button and it should initiate download of a file. So we can see that file uh, was downloaded. And if we will go to the folder, there is now downloads folder here. And this is the file that we downloaded. So this is the way how to set the download folder. There is also a way to specify a dynamic download folder. And we covered this uh, in the previous uh, Ninja session. Okay, what's next? So the next is how to configure permanent user profile. So as I already said, uh, by default, when we run a test, a new fresh profile is created. Sometimes uh, it may not be good. So for example, uh, if you are logging into some uh, application and it requires you multi-factor authentication. Uh, if you do, you may do this manually and allow the application to work for some long period, maybe months or maybe half a year uh, without uh, entering uh, authentication code. But if you are using the fresh profile, um, so the default uh, browser profile, then uh, you will be prompted to enter uh, authentication code every time. Also, every time uh, if the site has a prompt uh, regarding some cookies, uh, you will be prompted to accept cookies. If you don't want to do this every time, uh, you can launch uh, Chrome with the same uh, browser profile uh, every time. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's close this and let's uh, record one more uh, one more site. I will name the sheet file and I will record here. I'll start recording. And I will navigate to um, this site. I think I should go to HTTPS stack overflow.com. Okay, so here you can see this accept all cookies prompt. Uh, if we are using a new profile every time, then we will see this uh, prompt every time as well. Okay, so let's finish. Let's close uh, the browser. At the end to end, let's close the browser. If we will run our test, we will see uh, the prompt uh, for cookies again. But now then we will switch to a permanent uh, uh, browser profile. Let's see how to do this. So going to a specific knowledge base article, how to set a user profile. Uh, we need to specify this argument uh, in Selenium profile. So this is user data dir uh, parameter to Chrome and then the path to the folder where you want to create this profile. When you install rupees, uh, this folder is created automatically so we can place our permanent profile uh, inside this temp folder. Okay, so I go to Chrome, finding my from arguments, put it here. Okay. And now if I will run my test, then by the way, let's check that we don't have this profile uh, already created. It should be C, program data, in Fletra, rupees, stamp, from. Okay, let's delete it from here. We don't have a profile. If we launch this for the first time, 
play selection. We will see cookie prompt. Oh, let's play this. Okay, now I will accept cookies and it will be stored uh, into the profile, closing the browser, play selection. And now we will not see this prompt. Okay. So in our practice, uh, for example, we used this uh, permanent profile uh, when we tested a Salesforce application because Salesforce needs you to receive uh, an SMS uh, or something to authenticate. Uh, if you uh, launch a test with a uh, uh, fresh profile every time, then you will need to uh, receive SMS and somehow enter the code every time. Okay, uh, the next is how to run a browser test on a remote browser or mobile device. So the power of rupees is that you may uh, record a browser uh, a test uh, on a local Chrome, and then you may uh, run it uh, on some remote uh, browser or a mobile device. Uh, it may be uh, a remote machine that you configured in a special way, or you may use one of the uh, browser or mobile device uh, uh, providers uh, on the market. So such uh, firms like uh, companies like uh, browser stack, Kviton, uh, C-Test, uh, South Labs, and there are more of them. Even Amazon uh, has the device farm uh, already. So uh, I will use browser stack uh, to demonstrate this feature but the idea is the same. So it does not matter uh, what uh, browser or mobile device um, provider uh, you are using. Okay, so we have a test. Um, it has some steps here and we are running it on Chrome. Um, and now I'm going to run it uh, on browser stack. I have an account there. Uh, let's switch to the dashboard. So this is the dashboard that displays me the most recent uh, executions. Uh, and I need to do some configuration uh, to my test. So let's open the profile and let's scroll it down. And here we have some configuration parameters for browser stack. We also have some sections here, uh, okay, we don't have for others, but uh, if you don't have this, uh, there is a way to specify the uh, parameters for another other pro providers uh, as well. So I'll show how to do this for browser stack. Uh, others are um, in a similar way. So uh, to run a test there, I need to specify the username, uh, access key, and some information where I want to uh, launch uh, launch my test. So uh, to not reveal uh, the key here, um, I have a couple of profiles already created and I will simply copy them uh, into my test. So I go to the folder of my test. Here we go. This is the, uh, if you have local profiles, then all such profiles are inside profiles folder and inside Selenium profiles folder. And I have the profiles created here. They are on the desktop. And I will copy them here. Okay. Maybe copy back. Okay, also uh, the um, username and password uh, for the profiles uh, can be stored in an external file. And I have such a file here as well. And I copy it uh, to my test as well. Okay, let's now return back uh, to repeats. 
we can now see uh, these profiles uh, here. And I choose the browser stack and profile, and it should simply run uh, my test on some remote home. So this is my dashboard. And let's simply run the test. So I hit play. And we should see something happening here. Okay, so this is the latest from on some random system because I did not specify that rating system. And we should see our test executing. So this is the desktop. It can be Windows, can be uh, Mac OS. And it can be not only Chrome, can be some other browser. Okay. And also we can run on a mobile uh, device as well. So I hit play. And we will see our test running uh, on a mobile browser. So now I am using the profile where all the uh, options are hard coded. Uh, the key, access key, the username, uh, the device name, the operating system version uh, to use. Uh, but there is also a way to have this information externally. Okay, by the way, uh, we can see that our test doesn't work on a mobile device. So something is not working. So I saw, uh, we can see that uh, the test entered a username, password, and click on the login did not work. So sometimes uh, it may happen on mobile uh, devices. And now we will fix the test. So one of the First things to do, so one of the typical reasons why it does not work is the, the way how we click uh, on the button. There are two ways uh, of clicking on the button. And to fix my test, I simply need uh, to replace all the clicks with do uh, left click here in my test. So I'm changing all the clicks. Okay, a logout. Okay, and books. Okay, let's run again. And I think it will pass. There is also a global way of changing how all the clicks uh, work uh, in a test. Okay, I hope that it will work this time. And we also will have uh, screenshots from the device in our test report. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it works. So this application is not designed to work on a mobile device, but it, it works. And we can see the screenshots here. Okay, and uh, there is a way to put uh, the configuration parameters uh, externally. So now I will choose another profile here, browser stack generic. And it only has the URL uh, to browser stack and nothing else. So there is no access key, there is no username, no device uh, and operating system specification here. But uh, I have uh, this uh, in my user file. Oh, I don't have it yet. So I need to put here a specific code that will do this configuration. Let's go to the knowledge base article regarding how to run those browser tests on browser stack. And so first thing that uh, I didn't show you from the very beginning is that into URL uh, parameter, we need to put a specific uh, link, specific URL, 
it's different for different uh, providers. And we also need this, uh, uh, I have RPS 7.4, uh, so I need to use this function. So this is the callback function that is executed uh, automatically by RPS, and it specifies the um, parameters, uh, browser profile parameters that uh, you do not want to hard code here in the dialog, or maybe such a parameters may be missing here completely. So if there is a parameter that you cannot see here, then you may simply specify such a parameter in the callback. So here we need to specify a username and access key. Okay, and we want to read username and access key from the config JSON file uh, that we have here. Okay, let me switch to another test. And I will copy such values from there. Okay. So the JSON file contains uh, browser stack user and browser stack key uh, fields. Okay, switching back to the test that we created. Okay, put it here. And so let's change something. I don't want to run it again on Samsung Galaxy S20. Let's run it on iPhone 12, 14. Okay, I don't, I missed the comma. Okay, play. Go into our dashboard. Up. I don't know if it works uh, on iPhone, but we can check. Okay, does not work on iPhone for some reason, but maybe it's a browser stack issue. Anyway, so uh, you may hard code your values uh, into browser profile, or you may uh, put the values uh, into your script and get the values uh, from somewhere. You can read the values from the file, you can read it from database, uh, it can be a parameter to your test. So there are different ways how you may uh, connect uh, to, to a remote target uh, here. Okay, so I think it was the last configuration task that I wanted to describe today. So uh, I'm uh, handing over uh, the word to Teresa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Denise, for that like really comp comprehensive presentation there. Um, we do have a few questions that have come in from the audience. Um, the first one is, uh, I need to test with Edge. How should I configure a profile for that? Okay, testing on the Edge. Okay, got the question. Uh, so the Edge uh, these days, it's uh, the Chrome, uh, which looks a bit differently, but it is a Chrome inside. So it means that uh, we don't have a specific Mm, section here for edge, but everything that you can use with Chrome, uh, you can use with edge as well. So if you need to launch edge uh, <clears throat> full screen, then you may specify all the same uh, command line parameters here. So there is no difference between configuring edge and Chrome. Do we have more questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, this one uh, says, um, what if the Chrome is embedded into a desktop application? Can I connect to that? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, 
Chrome can be used standalone, uh, like uh, the normal browser, but there are applications based on uh, Electron, or for example, Microsoft Teams or Unified Service Desk for Microsoft or Skype using it as well. So it's the Chrome is inside. And there is also a way to uh, connect to such Chrome from for piece. So for, for this purpose, you need to go to your profile, find the let's go to well, find the debugger address uh, parameter here, and here you will need to type something like localhost uh, semicolon and the port, and this is the debugger port um, that is opened in Chrome that is loaded by some other application. So there is a default port, local host like 9222, I think. Uh, and in many cases, uh, you may simply launch the application in a specific way to specify uh, this debugging port. Mm -hmm. So in Chrome, in Chrome, there is a remote debugger port. command line uh, parameter. So I'm just opening the first, first link here. Remote. Mm, interesting. Mm. Port. Okay, so this is the parameter, remote debugging port. And if you launch uh, so if you launch some application with this parameter, it is uh, also transferred to Chrome, and then the Chrome will run with this debugger port uh, open. You may specify a different value here, but you need to remember this port and uh, specify it uh, in your browser profile and repeats. So if debugger address is specified, then Rupees will not launch the application for you. But when the application is running, then Rupees will connect to browser with the debugging port opened and will be able to uh, even do the recording uh, and playback, of course, playback for, for embedded Chrome in such an application. So uh, this is my answer. Yeah, excellent. Um, it looks like we do have another question here. Um, this one says, is it possible to remove the message Chrome is being controlled by automated test software? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's delete this. So let me describe what this question uh, is about. Do you want to save? Yes, I want to save. Let's simply uh, run the browser, play selection. Okay, uh, this is the message. Uh, it's at the top. Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. Uh, sometimes you may want to remove it because it uh, eats some space at the top. And uh, this is not, uh, may, maybe not what you want. Uh, in this case, you may use this parameter. So just go to the profile and locate, uh, exclude switches uh, parameter here. And the switch that we want to remove is enable, uh, automation. If we remove this switch, uh, this is the default switch that Selenium is using to launch the browser. If you will remove this, we will not see uh, this uh, message. I hope so. Yeah, so there is no such a message uh, at the top. Okay, so yeah, this All is right. the answer to the question. Uh, yeah, so uh, that are all the questions uh, that our audience have uh, posed for this session.
Um, so thank you so much, uh, Denise, for this fantastic um, uh, Inflectra Ninja session. I do want to give hey, a shout you. out uh, to uh, our um, InflectraCon conference that's coming up in April, uh, April 19th through the 21st uh, here in DC. Um, for those of you in attendance today, there's a 10% discount to those tickets, um, and there's going to be more content just like what uh, Denise uh, provided today. So um, feel free to use the discount code um, icon ninja 10 uh, to get 10% off of, of tickets for that event here in DC this spring. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, Teresa. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye. Bye now.